assumed to be zero. Mean arterial pressure is around 90 millimeters of mercury. Um, this is average over the cardiac cycle, and so it's usually estimated as one third diastolic pressure and two thirds, uh, sorry, one third systolic pressure and two thirds diastolic, since the systolic phase is shorter than the diastolic phase. Um, mean pressure does decrease going down the vasculature, down the arterial tree, because that's what drives the flow. And the biggest drop in pressure going down the arterial tree is across the arterioles, which are the smallest arteries. So they're the smallest, and we'll see that they have the highest resistance. Okay, so blood flow and velocity. So usually flow rate, that Q, uh, can be expressed as a mean velocity, <clears throat> like centimeters per second, times a cross-sectional area, like centimeters squared. Um, a typical flow and velocity in an artery, something like the carotid arteries in, in your neck, um, they may have a velocity of five milliliters, sorry, a flow rate of five milliliters per second and a diameter of say 0.7 centimeters. So if we do that flow over um, the cross-sectional area, we get a mean velocity of 13 centimeters per second. So that's close to the highest velocity um, that's seen in the circulation normally. Vascular resistance. So this uh, tells you the pressure needed to maintain a given flow. Um, so higher resistance, means you have higher pressure or more work required to maintain the flow. Resistance of the whole circulation, you can consider that, and that could be looked at as mean arterial pressure minus mean venous pressure. And so if we have this delta P equals uh, Q times R, then the Q is cardiac output and the R is called this total peripheral resistance, TPR. And we can compute a typical TPR as about 0.018 PRUs. So if we take the uh, pressure drop across circulation divided by the cardiac output, we can estimate the TPR of about 0 .08, 0 0.018 PRUs. Okay, so to estimate vascular resistance, we wanna look at vascular resistance of, of individual blood vessels. And so for a single vessel, uh, length is important, so longer vessels have more resistance, Diameter is important, um, smaller vessels have more resistance, and also um, the importance of diameter explains why there's a large pressure drop in arterioles and capillaries because they're small vessels, small diameters, and so they have high resistance. Blood viscosity also affects uh, flow resistance, and more, more viscous blood offers more resistance to flow. Um, to predict resistance of a, of a vessel, we need to know the velocity profile since resistance is due to viscous forces at the interfaces between blood and blood or blood and wall interfaces. So when different layers of blood flow over each other, there's a resistance. And when blood flows over um, the wall, there's a resistance due to viscosity. So we need to know how velocity changes as you go from the center to the wall to estimate the resistance of flow. Um, for steady flow in a tube or a blood vessel, we can derive a quadratic a velocity profile, which we call the Poisson profile, which gives us the Poisson resistance law. Okay, so before we do that, we'll talk a little bit about velocity and shear. So viscous shear stress tau is the viscosity mu times the shear rate gamma dot. Um, tau is a frictional force exerted by flowing blood on adjacent material, which could be other blood or could be the wall. Gamma dot is the shear rate. This is the difference in velocity divided by the spacing, or it can be called the velocity gradient. Um, and this mu is the dynamic viscosity, which is resistance of a material to shear. Um, if we look at the units of shear stress, say dynes per centimeter squared, and we look at shear rate, one over S, or inverse seconds, then we get the units for viscosity of dyne seconds per centimeter squared, which is called a poise in CGS units. Okay, so tau is mu gamma dot. And if we know um, the shear rate or the velocity gradient and we know the viscosity, then we can get the shear stress tau. Okay, so for Poisson's law, we assume a tube with diameter d, um, viscosity mu, length l, um, this delta p, which would be p1 minus p2, and some flow rate q. And so we can show now. Um, and so let me skip ahead a little bit. So we can show that a balance between pressure forces and shear stress give you um, Poisson's law, which says that um, 
the flow Q is pi g to the fourth times delta P over 128 mu L. And from that, we get that the resistance um, is actually 128 mu L over pi d to the fourth. Okay, so we, that's really Poisson's law is this pressure, pressure flow relationship, which involves a resistance um, that we've shown. Our resistance, you can see, is linearly related to vessel length and viscosity, so that's L and mu, and it's inversely related to the fourth power of diameter d to the fourth. Um, so what this means is that resistance of a vessel can be doubled by only about a 15% decrease in diameter. So a small decrease in diameter can give a large increase um, in resistance to flow. Okay, I mean, that's something that can happen when you get plaques inside your arteries and that can lead to high blood pressure. Okay, so a little bit more fluid mechanics now. Um, something called the Reynolds number, which for given geometry, it determines the characteristics of the flow. It's uh, a dimensionless number. Reynolds number is density times some velocity scale times diameter if you have tube flow divided by the viscosity. Okay, so that's the Reynolds number. Um, it can be thought of as the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces. So if the Reynolds number is small, that means that viscous forces are dominant. Um, as Reynolds number increases, inertial forces become more important. Um, and so we can use Reynolds number to get an idea of whether flow is very viscous or moderately inertial or very inertial. And so laminar flow is very layered ordered flow and that's, that's usually highly viscous flow. Turbulent flow is disordered, random, chaotic, and that usually happens um, when inertial forces are, are much more important than viscous forces. So in tube flow or vessel, you know, in a very perfectly circular vessel, Turbulence begins at, at Reynolds numbers above about 2000. And so that means that if you take blood flow in a typical vessel, and if you look at the Reynolds number, it will be much less than 2000. And so blood flow is rarely turbulent in the circulation. Um, it can be sometimes not perfectly laminar, but just because it's not perfectly laminar doesn't mean it's turbulent. So it can be disturbed or oscillatory, have some complexity to it, but not be turbulent. So usually uh, blood flow and circulation um, is not turbulent. Okay. Um, so using Poisson's law, we can try to um, derive a relationship for um, if you have a certain amount of blood flow, what size vessel should carry that flow? And so this relationship we're gonna derive is called Murray's law. So you can think about pumping power. So the rate of work required to overcome flow resistance. The units of that would be watts. Um, and so we can write that this work required to pump blood is pressure drop times flow. And so this is similar to how you would um, look at the work required to, to move current through a resistor. And so if we know that pressure drop is resistance times flow, then we can eliminate the pressure drop and we can show that the work required to pump blood, um, volume of blood Q unit time, is the resistance times Q squared. Now, if we go to Poisson's law and put in the resistance, this 128 mu L over pi d to the fourth, multiplied by Q squared, <clears throat> we get an expression for the work required to pump blood Q, right, a flow rate Q, a vessel of length L and a diameter D. Okay, so we get that. Um, now, Murray's cube law turns out we can show that if you want to pump pump blood Q, uh, flow rate Q, then you should have a vessel of diameter D, a D cubed, okay? So Q goes like D cubed, or D goes like Q to the one third, okay? So that's Murray's cube law. This is an optimality principle first proposed by Murray in 1926, and it describes how vessel, sorry, how flow in a vessel scales with diameter, or how di diameter should scale with flow, okay? Um, so this, we're saying this is sort of optimal. If you wanna have a certain, um, a certain flow, that the, the diameter should go like D to, sorry, diameter should go like Q to the one third. Okay. So here's a derivation of that. Um, we know pumping power required to maintain blood flow goes like one over D to the fourth because of Poisson's law. Um, we can assume that metabolic power is required to maintain blood volume and, and the blood vessels. So we can assume that goes like D squared, which would be blood volume. So we assume the length of the circulation is fixed, the length of each vessel is fixed 
but the question is how big should diameter be for a certain flow?